Hey everyone, my name is Michael Gill. I'm the maker of No Code Coffee, which is a daily newsletter that introduces you to one new no code tool, one new no coder, and one new product made without code every day in your email inbox. And today what I wanna do is give you a bit of a walkthrough and show you how I set up my daily newsletter to be completely automated. It will build the newsletter, schedule it, and send it out all without any code and all based off of me tagging and bookmarking um, interesting no-code products and people the way that I already do. So let me take you through the process and show you how this is done. So the first thing I wanna do is show you uh, what the newsletter is and what it looks like and then I can walk you through how I put it together. So on my screen here, on the left-hand side, um, I've got an example of the no-code coffee newsletter. This is an issue that went out, uh, I believe, just on Thursday. And uh, what you'll see is I've got a header, I've got an opening message, um, I've got a couple of paragraphs of an introduction for the day. And then as you scroll down, you'll see I've got um, an interesting tool, a person, and a product. So at the bottom, I also have a summary and the idea for this section is it'll show you uh, the previous week and uh, what all of the links were for that week. So if you missed a few issues, you can easily get caught up here at the bottom. And then down below that, I've got um, a random tweet of mine that it pulls in from a recent uh, tweet that I posted, a little closing message by me, a buy me a coffee link, and just the regular footer here. So I built this in MailChimp, and that's what I'm currently using uh, to send out my newsletters. So on the right side of my screen here, this is the No Code Coffee website. This is where people go to sign up. It's a very simple page, um, just gives an opening statement about what No Code Coffee is. And then down below shows you what's in the newsletter, one new No Code tool, one new No Coder, and one new No Code product in your inbox every day for free. Very simple message with another option to sign up. When they sign up, uh, this goes into a uh, Airtable uh, base. The other things that I have here in my Airtable base is I've got a table of tools. Um, so this is where I pull from uh, for the tools section of the newsletter. There's a name, a link, uh, there's a description, a story, and then I've got a status um, for them as well, and I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. I've also got um, tables for no coders and for products, and then I have a table called newsletter, and really what this is, it's kind of like a CMS, a, a content management system for my newsletter. This is just kind of uh, the opening title, as I mentioned, uh, the opening paragraph, all of that uh, gets pulled from this newsletter table, as well as the tweet at the bottom. So I've got uh, a few different types uh, for each of the records in here, a greeting, an open, and a tweet. And then under the tools section, um, I mentioned there's a status here. The statuses available are pending, fresh, and served. Uh, pending means it's not ready to be published yet. Um, it's just kind of a holding place. Um, sometimes they could be submissions um, that I haven't reviewed yet, or it could be something where I've stored it, but I don't have all the info in there yet, so I don't want it to go out. When I'm ready for it to go out, I'll set the status to fresh, and fresh means that it's ready to be served up um, in the newsletter, like a hot cup of coffee, and uh, served means it's already been served, and that way I know that it's already gone out in a newsletter and not to send it again. And I use those as triggers um, to pull into my, uh, into my newsletter. All right, so now I wanna walk you through my uh, Zapier integration and show you how that works with both Airtable and MailChimp. So um, my Zapier uh, integration for assembling the newsletter, this is a daily email draft um, Zap that I have, um, is 20 steps. And I know that seems like a lot, but I'll, you'll see as I go through it, it's really, it's really not that many. Um, so the first step is um, the trigger. And the trigger that I have set up is uh, called Schedule by Zapier. And basically what this is, is um, my trigger is set to every day. You could set it to every month, every week, every hour, but since mine is a daily newsletter, 
Um, the idea that I've currently got set up is each day I want it to send me the draft for the following day's email. So uh, what I have set up is every morning at 7 a.m. it sends me the draft for tomorrow and I can look at it. I actually have all day to review uh, the draft before I approve it to be sent out. Step two is to uh, get the draft issue date. I'm pulling in the date from step one, which is the date that the zap is running, and then I'm telling it to add one day. So there's this really simple expression here that says plus one day, and that adds a day to the date that it's running. And what I have now is the date for my draft. So step three is using storage by Zapier. So you may not know, uh, Zapier offers a storage function where you can store um, key value pairs. Basically, you, you know, the key is what you uh, reference the data by and the value is the data itself. And so I'm using storage by Zapier and then the action event is get multiple values because I've got multiple stored in, uh, in my Zapier storage. And I'll show you what I've got here. So here are my keys. Um, there is the no code coffee draft issue number. So this is what issue is the, am I building the draft for? It's basically what's tomorrow's issue number going to be. And then there's a recap for the seven previous days, as I mentioned, um, in the news at the bottom of the newsletter here. If you look on the left hand side, I'll show the previous week's, uh, recap. And that's what, uh, these values are for. So step four is uh, where I start pulling from Airtable um, to get the content to put into the newsletter. This step just selects a greeting from my table, which is usually this top line here. In this example, it says what's shaking. So that's my greeting um, for uh, this sample issue here. And then I've got um, a few other steps that are all Airtable. So step five, six, seven, eight and nine are all um, the same type of step as what I just showed you to select the greeting. I'm just selecting different parts of content for the newsletter. So I select the open, which is this section here. Um, then I select the tool, which is the first feature. The no coder is the second feature and the product is the third feature. And then I'm also selecting a tweet. Um, as I mentioned, it pulls one of my tweets uh, to go at the bottom here to be featured in the newsletter. Step 10 is a really simple step. It's just to format the date of the tweet um, because I want to display it in a different format than what it uh, what it's stored as in Airtable. Step 11 is the step that creates the draft campaign in MailChimp. This is where all of this content that I've pulled out of Airtable um, gets assembled together and made into this format that you see here on the left, which looks like a newsletter. The app is MailChimp and the action is create campaign. Um, in the customized campaign step, this is where all the magic happens. This is where it comes together. Um, you've got a campaign name, um, which I've already pre-filled with a couple of values. I'm using the draft issue number. I'm using the date from step two. Um, I've got my audience selected, which is no code coffee. Um, the subject line, uh, here's something kind of cool. What I've got is for each uh, link that I put into my Airtable base, it doesn't matter if it's a tool or a no code or a project, um, I put a tease word in there and it's usually one or two words, um, but it's a tease word and I chain those together for the subject line. Um, so if we go and look at this email here actually, uh, the subject line for this one is beautiful sites, clients on autopilot, and no code resources. Um, so that's stringing together these three uh, tease words that I've got in my Airtable base. So uh, that's what this step does. It just pulls in these tease words, um, it puts no code coffee in there with an emoji. It's got the issue number and it's got the date. Um, there's a preview text. This is just the first few lines of text that shows in your email client before you click to open the email. Um, and for that, I've got a field in my Airtable base that does that. Um, there's the from name and email. And then here is the email content HTML. In your um, MailChimp uh, template, there's a 
you know, here's the campaign preview, which is what I was showing you earlier, but the second tab uh, from the left says HTML source. If you click that, you can uh, view all of the HTML that puts this uh, newsletter together. You can copy and paste it here into Zapier, and then you can replace the parts that you want to uh, customize or have automated. So you'll see throughout uh, the newsletter here, out throughout the HTML, I've got um, certain places where I'm popping in all of my content from uh, Airtable, um, different links and images and all of that. So step 12 is increment draft issue number. And uh, all this is is a formatter by Zapier. Um, the action event is numbers. And all I'm doing is adding one to the draft issue number. Again, I'm about to store this uh, draft issue, or I should say update the uh, value that I already have stored for the draft issue number. And this is just preparing it for tomorrow. So I'm adding one to it and that's it. Step 13 is um, to set the stored values. So this is the draft issue number and the recaps. If you remember at the bottom of our email here, we have all these recaps. Um, and each time I generate a new newsletter, I wanna update those recap values. So once again, this is a storage by Zapier app. Um, and the action is to set multiple values. If we look at the values that we have in here, I basically treat day seven as seven days ago, day six as six days ago, and so on. And so um, I'm rotating and moving each uh, value back a day um, because it's a rolling seven day recap that's gonna be in this newsletter. And so day six becomes day seven, day five becomes day six, and you kind of get the idea. Um, so all of these are just moving the previous day back and then my day one recap, um, which will become yesterday, um, is the current set of values. So these are all the same values that I loaded into my um, template earlier for MailChimp. All right, and then steps 14 through 19 are just updating my Airtable. Um, and all I'm doing here is setting uh, two values. One, I'm setting the date served um, to be today. So I know that all of these uh, different links and, and features were and pieces of content were served today. And then I also set the status to served so that they're taken out of rotation and they won't be pulled into future um, issues. So I do that for the greeting, the open, the tool, no coder, product, and the tweet. And then the last step, uh, and this is really just for me, but I post a message in Slack. So I'm using the uh, Slack app and I'm using the event send channel message. And all this does is creates a new message um, with a link to the uh, draft preview that was just generated in step seven. And then a link to my campaigns page just so I can go view, view it there. Um, and it's posted by the bot, the no coffee, no code coffee bot. And uh, that's really it. So I can actually pull up my Slack and show you what this looks like. So here's a view of my Slack. Um, and this is just a channel where I've got um, these uh, bots posting. And you can see um, for the past several days, it's got my uh, newsletter email draft with the preview link and the link to my campaigns. The uh, big advantage of this is now I've got my daily newsletter automated. So I don't have to spend time every single day building a new newsletter. I can create in batches, which is what I love to do. Um, when I find helpful links, when I find new no coders, when I find new products, I throw them into Airtable um, and then they will continue to build up and they get pulled into a newsletter. Some of the things that I would like to add next uh, to this automation is I would like to have the draft automatically be sent out if I don't approve it. As I mentioned, it, it comes to me at 7 a.m. Um, and so I have all day to view it, but there's I know there's gonna be days um, where I'm busy and don't get a chance to review it, but I still want the newsletter to go out. So I would rather have it go out uh, even without me having previewed it um, just in case. The other thing I would like is I would like for it to send me these drafts in batches, meaning I would love for it to send me two, three, four days at a time. Um, so that way, when I sit down to review newsletter drafts, I can sit down and review multiple. And that way I only have to do it once or twice a week, maybe sit down and review the drafts and then have them still schedule out and, and send out. 
Um, the other thing I would like to work on next is um, more ways for me to get these links bookmarked. Um, I would love to have a uh, custom Chrome extension where I can just click, um, you know, click in my Chrome browser and put in my links and then put in my, my little editorial about them and have those go directly into my Airtable base. So that's what I'm looking to do uh, next. So um, again, I hope this has been helpful for you guys. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me on Twitter at Gil underscore works and hopefully I can help you make something great.